Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this one I want to try and address some questions and comments that I've had relating to running the JavaScript environment that I call ESP32 duct tape on the ESP32 in order to be a web server. One of the uh, built-in capabilities of the JavaScript environment on ESP32 is that there are pre-built libraries and a lot of these pre-built libraries try and attempt to uh, provide some of the more commonly requested functions and one of those is being a web server. Now being a web server means that the ESP32 will receive incoming browser requests and service those browser requests. So what is a browser request? Well a browser request simply is a request from a browser, that's pretty obvious, where an HTTP request is sent to an address on the internet, the server receives that request, examines the request uh, 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 parameters, and usually serves up a file of HTML data that corresponds to that request. The web server then sends back that HTML and that is then visualized within the browser. Now, in the duct tape environment, this script that you're seeing on the screen is all we need to do to be a web server. So let me take you through this script briefly and then we'll deploy it and we'll see it running. So the first thing we do is we declare in our application script that we require the services of HTTP and we require the services of the file system. We then create a constant definition, which is the port number, the TCP IP port number we're going to listen to, and uh, that's uh, port 80, which is the default for HTTP servers. Then we call the create server method of the retrieved HTTP class. The create server method creates as an instance of a server, creates as a, a, an HTTP server ready for listening. Now, that HTTP server creation requires as a parameter a function that will be called back when an incoming REST or browser request arrives. And that function I've called request handler. There it is down there, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Now, having created the HTTP server, it isn't yet actively bound to uh, any ports. It's not actively listening yet. We might want to do some further setup before it starts to be able to receive incoming requests. So at the end, we then call the server.listen method, passing in the port number we're going to be listening upon. And that's the end of the initialization. Now, the core of the function is the request handler function. This gets called once per incoming request into the ESP32 from a browser. The request handler function takes two parameters, the request object and the response object. The request object describes the nature of the incoming request. Things like uh, what are the HTTP headers, what is the path that is being requested to be read, and uh, what is the command, is it a get, is it a post, is it a delete, is it something else. The response object is an object where we can call methods on it to send response data back to the browser. So think of the request object as the encapsulation of the incoming request from the browser and the response object being the encapsulation of how we achieve responses back to the browser. We register a callback function on the request object that will be triggered when the end of the request has been received. We initially get called when the request has just arrived before we do any processing on it, but at some time later there will be an end event. And that end event signifies that the full request has been received and we have parsed it. When the request has been fully received, we invoke this function, and this function examines the path on the, on the request. So the path is the part after the uh, IP address or the internet address that we're sending the request to. Uh, what we do is we then try and load a file from the ESP32 file system that corresponds to that path. 
If we failed to get the data back, then we write 404 as a status code. That's an indication to the browser that uh, the file could not be read. Otherwise, we write 200 in the response back to the browser. That's the indication that the HTTP request was successful. And finally, we send the data back, which comes from the file. We end uh, our response request, and that's the end of the mechanism. So let's go over here and let's run uh, make monitor. This will start up a monitor on our ESP32. It will also start up the ESP32. We're assuming that we've loaded duct tape into it. So duct tape is already running. Um, it's starting up. So this is my ESP32 starting. Uh, the ESP32 running the duct tape. It's connecting to my network and it's starting up the IDE web server. So we're now all connected to this IDE. Now, if I hit the run button, that's going to run this script. So if I hit run, that script is sent to it, and we are now running this particular script. So we should somewhere in here see a message about we are listening on port number 80. And there it is. Now, if we go over to our browser, and uh, ba, 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 let's see, how do I want to do this? If we go over to our browser, oh, I crashed it. One second, let me pause it here. Oh, sorry about that. Now, if we go back to our browser and we enter the URL of my ESP32, which happens to be listening at this IP address, and then provide a path to an HTML page, when we load this file, it loads the HTML page. And each time we hit the uh, refresh button, it uh, reloads the file from the ESP32 server. So this is great. So uh, this file here is contained on the ESP32 file system. And uh, here's the sample file. Now, if I come in here and I change this, let's add some new text. Um, hello from Neil. Save that. I can uh, go back to my console here. I can say make flash data. And um, what this will do is this will write the new file system to the ESP32, which contains my changed web page. I can run make monitor and that will start up the ESP32. Uh, it will connect again to my network environment. Let that start up. Takes a few seconds. My network isn't the fastest thing. And uh, we should now be connected. I now rerun my script. I run my script. Done. And now if I go back to my browser and refresh the browser, we now get hello from Neil as the data served up from the web page. So the core thing that I wanted to get across was the nature of writing a ESP32 duct tape web server based script. Uh, in this example, I'm merely serving up files from the file system. So a request comes in for a named file, I load that file from the file system and send it back to the browser a very basic web server. But you notice that we've got it in about 26 lines of code with uh, some debug statements placed in there as well. Should we wish to build a REST server, so if we wanted to process incoming RESts, in here we might check the path value to see if it's a particularly well-known path. And if it is, instead of loading data from a file, we may want to perform some action, such as uh, getting a value from a sensor and mechanically sending that back instead of sending back data from uh, a file in the file system. I hope you found this uh, useful and uh, look forward to more of these tutorials to come. Thanks now and bye-bye.